are, are valid ways to, to split up the state. And this kind of behavior happens in many, many states, right? There's very concentrated urban populations and then very uh, uh, lightly populated areas uh, through most of the area of that particular state. So this is not an easy thing to say. This is clearly better than, than this. And so as a result, I definitely would investigate, hey, what happens if I put these seeds around the center area and it's going to kind of cause this kind of pie-shaped behavior to happen versus I'm going to kind of spread them out throughout the state and I'll get more kind of clump behavior. Okay. <clears throat> so, um, there are mathematical reasons why you might prefer this one because you have smaller, more compact shapes. There are mathematical reasons why you might like this one because they're all uniform. There's not one that's being preferred over another. So depending upon metrics, which I had you kind of look at a little bit at the very beginning of the semester, you, the metric that you use to say this is a good way to distribute things might land on this, or it might land on this. So it's, it's really hard to say this is the only possible way that you should do it. So why not explore them both? Okay. Hopefully you can see how this strategy works, because all I said is that E isn't allowed into here unless, say, C is allowed in here. But C has the same kind of constraint, right? If we draw C's neighbors, C isn't allowed into this unless its nearby neighbors are in there. And those aren't allowed in, until eventually you're at something either here, of course this is allowed in this congressional district, or of course this one is allowed because it's touching that congressional district. Okay. So some counties like here, it'll be very uh, much this. Some counties will be just, yes, it's let in because it's a touching county, or yes, because I hard-coded it to be the C. Okay. Questions before I go forward? Yeah. Yes, David. Will there be like a way for you to demonstrate in Excel these concepts that you're describing, or do you want us to come talk to you if we run into issues, or? Yeah. Um, no, I don't have a way to demonstrate it in Excel because I don't have the data gotcha. uh, to show you. You guys have collected the data, and I have. So this, you already have this, right? Mm -hmm. You have a grid of, of cells where you said that this county is going to be in or not in each congressional district. And you already have a constraint that says the sum of those can only equal one. So now, what you're going to do is, if if this is the grid where you did it already, CD1, CD2, CD3, You have a constraint already for here that is binary. Mm -hmm. And you have another constraint that this equals 1. <clears throat> okay. Now what you're going to do is um, you could call this, um, I don't know, connected. And CD1, CD2, CD3. And right here, you're going to put in this Excel cell the equation that represents this right here. Okay. Right? So you're going to do whatever, wherever county E is for Congressional District 1, which would be, well, let's do it down here. 
it would be this cell right here, wherever that is, minus B, this, minus C, this, minus F, this. So it would this minus three, these three values. And you would do that for all N of your congressional districts as well. And these, every one in here, has to be less than or equal to zero. Okay. Thank you. All right. You still want the same objective function that you had for your, for your last assignment, where you're going to try to, you, you compute what the population is in each congressional district, and you want to get the minimum difference between your largest congressional district and your smallest congressional district. That should already be working, that should uh, not change. I would recommend that you definitely uh, bump up the parameters on your search to say five, at least five minutes um, and, and let it go for five minutes be because now you have a ton of constraints and it, it can take quite a long time before it tries to find a solution that works and so don't give up after 10 or 15 seconds. Um, if after five minutes it still can't give you a constraint then you're going to have to bump up what an acceptable good enough value is. Remember, you, you have two parameters in your, in your solver. One is how long it goes before it says that's good enough. And the second one is how much it, close, it is close enough to the optimal value. So I, I think right now the default value is, is unlimited in time and 5% for, for close enough. If you set that to five minutes, Try the 5% first and, you know, bump it up to 10% if that doesn't work. But if it's not good enough, then drop it back down to 5% or drop it down to 1%. Again, you're going to have to use your eyes to do the, the uh, does, this, does this look like it's a good, reasonable, reasonable value that I'm going to accept as a solution. You are not going to come up with the optimal solution you're coming up with a good enough solution. Yeah, David. How do we um, hard code seeds on that sheet? Do we just uh, ig in like here? Yeah, like you leave hard code them. them one zero 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 for which congressional district they're in, um, and then the equation for them is uh, that you you just you set the equation equal zero or whatever. Oh, okay. Then, so, so, they'll, so it doesn't change. They'll be in. Okay. So there's there's no well, we need either to, that or you could you could hard code them equal to zero and have that be a, a separate constraint. Would we need to exclude them from our variable um, list in the open solver? Yes, because you don't want open solver to change that. Okay. Other questions? This seeded method is very much what um, <coughs> people who do this for a living do. The difference between what, what they do and you do is that the size of the units that they're connecting together are a lot smaller. They're doing things like census tracts or maybe a group of a small group of census tracts together rather than an entire county together. Um, and so it can take them, since they've got thousands or tens of thousands of these in the state, it can take days or weeks just to come up with a candidate solution that doesn't violate any constraints. Do they use Excel for that or do they have specialized tools? They run specialized okay. solvers. If you're interested, there are more papers than you can uh, imagine. <laughs>
uh, it's worth academic um, credit to to figure this kind of stuff out. Yes. So regarding how many different um, ways do you want us to do it? Just one. Yeah. So you just have to come up with one set of seeds. Um, so you're focusing on how to get it right. Um, this is probably the biggest assignment of the semester. Okay. Um, because once you figure out how to do it once, and once you've got the automated processes in place, doing it the second and the third time should be just repeating those processes but with different seeds. If you haven't done them automated, then I guess this isn't the biggest one because you have to do it two more times. All right? Yeah, Chris. Are we still not worrying if one, uh, what called? your ABC, A through F things, the counties? Uh -huh. uh, is it okay if one of them is like contains a big city and that's just that one? Or are we just kind of worrying? Yeah, about no, that's, that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. It's, um, and in fact, if it's big enough, you're just going to hard code that city right. to be a congressional district, and you're kind of going to exclude it from all these calculations altogether. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's just an artifact of us choosing too large of a granular. Uh, um, but I didn't. This is a big enough project already. I didn't want to make it even larger by saying, you have to break those up into smaller chunks. All right. <clears throat> Let's switch over then to our No, it's a, it's running on the web server. It's running in PHP. All right. So turn to pay up to chapter thirteen, problem seventeen. We're gonna work on a problem together here and see how it works. So go ahead and turn to that. Read the problem so you're familiar with the the problem, um, and I'll start. Uh, going through the problem with you at 3.40, so give you two or three minutes to read what we're doing here. 